self-sizing table view cells. In fact, it's incredibly common to have to support content that is dynamic in height and length, or we might not necessarily know what a web service could give us back. So knowing how to take advantage of self-sizing cells is really important to be able to support that content without having to hack through a bunch of table view delegate methods to get it to work. And in this lesson, we are going to learn how to take advantage of self-sizing table view cells for this exact use case. So let's open up Xcode and get started. Self-sizing table view cells are actually pretty simple and require very little code to set up. And so from the context of a single view application, what we'll do to get started with is go into the main storyboard and we're gonna basically drag a table view and a table view cell onto our view controller. And we can do that from here. We can go up and look for a table view. And you could use a table view controller. Um, I'm just doing it this way to kind of show you how little code we need to set this up because table view controller comes with a few methods commented out and you have to figure out what you don't need and delete it. So we're just gonna do it from scratch, but I'm gonna drag a table view onto the view controller and I'm just gonna try and position it flush to the edges. like that. And then we can go down here to the constraints or for adding new constraints. And what we're going to do is pin the leading, the top, the trailing, and the bottom constraints to the super view or to the view controller. And we're going to go ahead and next add a table view cell to our table view. So we can go back in here and drag a table view cell right into the table view. And we can go ahead and give this an identifier. So what we can do here is with the view hierarchy expanded, we can go to the cell, go to the attribute inspector, and I'm just gonna give my cell the reuse identifier named cell, just to keep it basic. Now, the most important part of this lesson is the part that I'm about to explain. The way self-sizing table view cells work is auto layout figures out the intrinsic content size of the cell and adjusts the height of the cell based on the content size. So let's say, for example, you have long text inside of a label, and you can't predict how long that text is gonna be because it could be variable in terms of length and height. Well, auto layout can figure out whatever the intrinsic content size is of that label, and then give you the right sized cell to fit that content, if that makes sense. But in order to do that, the auto layout constraints have to be set a certain way. And in the context of labels, which is what we're gonna do for this lesson, the number of lines must be set to zero. So if either of those things aren't set just right, this isn't going to work. So with that said, what we can do is we can look for a label here and drag a UI label onto the cell. And we wanna make sure that the label is a sub view of the content view of the cell. So if you have your little view hierarchy open here and you can expand it from here if you don't have it, you want to make sure that your label is a sub view or is inside of the content view of your cell. Now, what you can do is select your label and go over to the attribute inspector. And there's a little uh, field here for lines. By default, it's set to one, meaning this label can only support one line. We want to change that to zero. So that way the label can grow indefinitely based on the text size. And now, like I said, the auto layout constraints are what are really gonna determine how this label or how this cell resizes. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and we're just gonna set this flush to the cell essentially. And I'm gonna just drag the right to the margin layout guides for the left side, the right side, Let's bring the bottom down as well and bring the top in just a little bit. And what we want to do here is go to add some constraints. We want to make sure that we're pinning the top, the leading, the bottom, and the trailing to the content view of the cell like this. And that's it. We don't want to fix any height constraints because this is going to use auto layout to determine the height based on the content. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the pre-loaded text in the label. And now we can go ahead and start hooking up our IB outlets. What we wanna do next is subclass our UI table view cell with a custom class. That way we can connect our label IB outlet to whatever this custom class is. So what we can do to do that is go over into your code and right click 
and add a new file. And we'll just call this, you know, we'll select Cocoa Touch class. And we'll just call this self sizing. And we'll subclass UI table view cell. And so that's going to be a self sizing table view cell name. And we can go ahead and hit create. And so that's good. And then what we can do here is we can go back to the main.storyboard. And with the table view cell selected, just go over to the class inspector here, or the identity inspector. And where the class is UI table view cell, we're going to go ahead and subclass self sizing table view cell. So now that we've set that up, what we can do here is go into the assistant editor. And we're just going to go ahead and connect the outlet. So we can get the self sizing table view cell on one side. And zoom back a little bit here and select the label. Uh, you can hold down the control key and just click and drag over and create a new outlet. So we'll just call this, um, I don't know, text, cell text maybe. And connect it. And so we're all set here. Now let's go ahead and hook up our table view to our view controller. So what we can do is keep the assistant editor open, go over and get the view controller on one side and the interface builder on the other side and select the table view and just do a control click and drag over and just create a new IB outlet. We'll just call it table view and hit connect. And now we can go ahead and start implementing the table view data source. And so what we can do is in view did load, we can just go table view data source and assign it to self. And we can then make an extension on the view controller that's going to conform to the table view data source protocol. And we'll implement the two required methods, which is number of rows in section, turn zero for the moment, and then cell for row at index path. And we'll go ahead and implement these momentarily, but let's go ahead and set up our actual data source. Now my data source is gonna be really basic and it's gonna be three strings in a string collection like this. And you can pause the screen if you wanna see what these are. And this is just the lorem ipsum text and just some default text and a middle string that is a short string. And the idea behind this is we wanna have a couple of long strings and a really short string to see how the self-sizing table views are going to resize around the length of the content that they're holding. And below these three strings here, I have a data source array, which is just a collection of strings, and it's assigned to empty at the moment. So once you've got your long strings or short strings set up, what we can do next is go into viewed load here and start putting these strings in our data source array. So we can just do data source.append one, and for me, I've got them named one, two, and three, so I can just do that append two and data source that append three. Now let's go ahead and wire up our table view data source now that we've actually defined our array. So number of rows in section can simply return the count of the data source. So we can just do return data source dot count like that. And for cell for row at index path, instead of this placeholder cell to avoid compilation errors, we can dequeue the self sizing cell and assign the label text like this. So uh, let self sizing cell table view dot We'll give it the cell identifier that we defined earlier in interface builder as self sizing table view cell. Now, what we can do here is we can return our cell back. And we can assign the label to it. So self sizing cell dot cell label text, I believe is what I called it. The dot text property will be assigned equal to data source at the index path dot row. And so that's all we need to do there. And now let's see what this looks like. 
Assuming you set everything up correctly in Interface Builder, you should see something like this. You'll see three cells, one that has long text, short text, and then the really long text at the bottom. And the cell is sized to fit the content exactly. Now, let's talk about a couple of points here. Because for one, a lot of you might be used to implementing the delegate method. And I'll show you real quick, UI table view delegate. And that method is height for row and index path. And let's say I return an arbitrary value from here, right? 150. And I assign the delegate up here. And we run it again. Let's see what happens. You'll notice here that the self-sizing cell breaks down the moment I implement height for row at index path and return any kind of value. So now they're all set to 150, and that's not really what we want because it's too large for the content here or too small for the first and the third cells. And so really what's going on under the hood are there are two properties that we want to understand. There's a table view dot row height. And by default, it is set to UI table view dot automatic dimension. And there's also a estimated row height. And you can give this an arbitrary value. Maybe I give it a, a value such as 300. And let's take a look at these properties because these are actually what's going on that determine the self-sizing. And if we look at the row height, let's open the developer documentation. The default height and points of each row, use this property to specify a custom height in the cells. The default value of this property is automatic dimension, which causes the table view to choose an appropriate height based on cell content. So that's good to know. Um, by default, this is what's going on, which is why I didn't necessarily need to set it in order for the self-sizing to work. Now, let's also take a look at the estimated row height here. And so it's just the estimated height of the rows in the table view. The default value is automatic dimension, which means that the table view selects an estimated height to use on your behalf. Setting the value to zero disables estimated heights, which causes the table view to request the actual height of the cell. And so these two properties are the key factors that determine how self-sizing is governed in your table view cell. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one more thing here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out because by default, that is the behavior that happens. So we don't necessarily need to explicitly define it if we don't want to. But let's go back into the storyboard and take a look at our label. And we'll go and expand it to the cell. And over here, what I want to do is set the line number to one. And so by doing that, but still supporting the self-sizing cell, let's see what happens once we have fixed our line count to one. And so by doing that, you can see that the cells are small, but the text is being clipped at one line. So that's why setting line to zero is the key factor besides the constraints uh, in determining how the intrinsic content size is governed. So we can go ahead and set lines back to zero. And there's one other thing I want to look at here before we wrap up. And if we select the cell and we go over to the size inspector, you can see that the row height is not even defined as any value. It's set to a default. So let's say, for example, I bump this up to 150 or something. And now let's go ahead and run this again. And you can see that it doesn't matter. It still is using the intrinsic content size to figure out the size of the cells, regardless of what I set for the size in Interface Builder. So that's really how simple it is to use self-sizing cells. They're pretty easy. You just have to be careful to not fix height constraints and make sure that you have elements in your cell subviews that can basically use intrinsic content size to either grow or shrink to the content that they're trying to support. And that wraps up this lesson. See, I told you this is pretty simple. There really wasn't that much code to write. If you found this lesson helpful, you know what to do. Go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to CodePro. It helps the channel out. Make sure to follow CodePro on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Skillshare, Udemy, and on Patreon. And thank you so much for stopping by and I will catch you in the next one.